Every week I go through the weather and climate headlines and put them into a summary uh, video like this one. This one covers the week from the 13th to the 19th of July. I hope you'll enjoy it. It seems that Hurricane Barry, as it moves inland, is going to be a continuing problem bringing heavy rain throughout the middle part of the country. There are 60,000 homes without power. New Orleans airport was virtually closed. And this looks like to be at least another $1 billion disaster. And there have been six so far in 2019. Now we've been hearing about the monsoon rains in India for the last couple of weeks. But there are areas that still are without a great deal of water. And Chennai is one of them. It's a city in southeast India and it's running out of water. So much so that the Indian government is having to truck in uh, large quantities of drinking water and are using trains to do it. Meanwhile, refugee camps in Bangladesh are flooded uh, due to the rains. The monsoon death toll has now reached over 160 in India, Nepal and Bangladesh combined. NOAA has just issued its monthly report on the status of the La Nina El Nino cycle. It says that we have a very weak El Nino still present, but that may well decay in the next month or two to be Enso neutral and possibly by the end of the year we're in a 50-50 situation between an El Nino and a La Nina. This is very important because it affects the weather that we will see around the world. As the week went on, we got more and more information about how much rain Barry was dumping on the United States. The remnants of the hurricane wandered up through the Midwest and then headed for the Northeast. Barry produced about half the amount of rain that was forecasted. We find that the path calculations were very good, but it's more difficult to predict the amount of winds and rain that a given storm will produce. It did little to help the cyanobacteria outbreak along the Mississippi. Talking about ongoing problems, aftershocks are still hitting Southern California after the large earthquake last week. There have been five significant aftershocks. Uh, and interestingly enough, there was a fairly significant earthquake in the East Bay of the San Francisco, probably along the Hayward Fault, which is quite worrying because that fault has been slated to go for some years now. On the 16th of July, New York City faced a fairly major power outage. Over 79,000 customers lost power as a result of a fire in a 13,000 volt cable. But with more heat waves on the way, the danger is that we'll get more of those sorts of blackouts. And that's the very last thing you want to have a power outage when the temperatures are so high because you lose your air conditioning. Here's one for the record books. On the 16th of July, the northernmost tip of Canada, a place called Alert, set a new all-time temperature record. The temperatures reached 21 degrees centigrade or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now Alert is about 700 miles north of Barrow, Alaska, and it beat its old record by a full 1 degree centigrade. The really funny part of this is that it was warmer than the high temperature in Australia on that same day. As Barry moved north, it started to hit Canada. Uh, Toronto got over two inches of rain uh, on Wednesday morning producing the worst flooding since the epic flood of 2013. Flooding also hit Ontario, Saskatchewan and Manitoba. A new report shows that California wildfires are getting bigger, at least during the summer. Half of the 10 largest fires have occurred in just the last decade. Fires on average are eight times larger than they were in the 1970s. California is now 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than it was back then. That extra heat dries out the plants a lot quicker and over a larger area, providing lots of fuel for these wildfires. Yesterday, a strong earthquake hit Athens. It was a 5.3 magnitude quake centered 15 miles northeast of the city. It produced power outages and communication problems, but fortunately there were no reports of deaths or serious injuries. A derecho hit the Midwest. A derecho is a set of linear winds that can cause trees to come down and power outages. Over a quarter of a million homes were without power this morning and many cars were damaged by large hailstones. A deadly heat wave is hitting the eastern half of the United States. Two people died in Maryland due to the heat and humidity. 
Roads have buckled and cracked across the country. The New York City Triathlon was cancelled for the first time in history. And there's more of this heat to come. Uh, these first two days were only the beginning. The worst two days are today and tomorrow. So we'll see uh, what that uh, brings for everyone. So that's all the news that's fit to print. If you enjoyed this video, please pass this link on to your friends and family who might be interested. Stay safe, and until next week, goodbye.